I think perhaps of all the art forms that are exploding in our society, dance is the most intriguing because it combines uh, athletics with art in a way that's unique, it seems to me, in art forms. And we're going to talk to Ann Reinking, who so far has made her career dancing, mm -hmm. being a dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's said in one of the studio biographies that she'd made a career of uh, dancing to Bob Fosse's uh, choreography and dancing. Do you subscribe mm -hmm. to that characterization? He's been, um, he's, he's employed me four times in four different shows, which is more than anybody else has. Mm -hmm. I have worked twice for Michael Bennett, and I worked for um, Pat Birch and uh, the people who created Grease once. But uh, I basically worked for Bob the most. Um, well, I think that's partly because his choreography suits me so well. Yeah. <coughs> he's happy with what he sees, and so. Uh, and also, he's very loyal. He hires very ma ma many times the same people over and over again, along with new people, because he, yeah. he, he approves of them, he likes them. Well, the reason I asked the question was to try and uh, sort out here what uh, the difference is between being a dancer and having your own individual creativity and dancing to the choreography of someone else. Well, when you're a dancer or an actress, you basically are an interpreter, and at best an inventive one. Uh, I, I'd like to think that I was an inventive interpreter, right. but I, my responsibility is not to create a show or to create a dance. My responsibility is to interpret artfully and expertly what the choreographer or director or both want. So it's almost an athletic prowess. Well, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's obviously athletic, I yeah. mean, because you know, dancers are constantly throwing their bodies around. It's one of the hardest things to do on a physical basis. Dancers get more injuries than a quarterback, and a football team does. Which quarterback? Well, less <laughs> Fran <laughs> Tarkington. Okay. I've gotten at least five, six more than him, <laughs> than he has. But uh, Serious injuries? Uh, I've only had... Um, I fractured a vertebrae, that was serious, and then I just got finished cutting my knee. I, I didn't know that you were supposed to cut your wrist, I got it, I said, I don't want to live anymore. Dancers cut their knees. <laughs> right, no, I had a, a dancer ran into me backstage and I <coughs> slid into a pole and gashed my knee. And knee, of course, is a vulnerable area for any athlete. Right. But a dancer takes one step beyond because because you see, a, a football player or a basketball player doesn't necessarily interpret the, uh, other than the fact that he makes a lot of baskets, his, his, well, the way we score, so to speak, is that we successfully tell a story, we successfully move you, uh, and, the, and that's a little different than making touchdowns <coughs> or a shot yeah. in the basket. It's no less of of, a, uh, of an achievement. It's just a different form of an achievement. You do understand that most people watching you now really don't know what you're talking about. I mean, they, most people, and including myself, I think, are really not sophisticated about the art form of dancing. Oh, it's but you've seen it so many times. Yeah, I know, and that's what intrigues me. We have yeah. seen it so many and times. And we love it. We can't stop dancing. Everybody dances. We go to sock hops in school and dance. We go to the discos. We used to, uh, the Indians used to dance for rain, and we used to do square dances, and we used to, the Irish came over to America and made fancy, you know, sounds with their clogs, and then, then the, the, our, the black society of America thought that was great, and they, they, they came up with hoofing and tap dancing, and then we took that, and we had sand dancing and Fred Astaire, and we, we've just been dancing and dancing and dancing, and then before that, we used to dance so we can attract a girl. Did you know that you used to dance to attract a girl? Well, that's why I've never had girls. I <laughs> you should have danced. You should have danced. I mean, it's been. Um, uh, well, did you dance to attract life boys? Ever since we, of course we do. Did, it must have worked for you. Well, yes, I've I've, I've had a few dates. <laughs> <laughs> She's being so demure. Right? <laughs> did you always want to be a dancer when you were a little girl? No, I wanted to be a, an Olympic swimmer. Did you um, get into that pretty deeply, swimming? Well, yeah, when uh, I lived in California for a while, and uh, so I swam a lot. And the, but then when I was 11 years old, we moved up, when I was 10, we moved up to Seattle, Washington, and that changed the swimming because it's mm -hmm. colder up there. 
and I saw a young girl dance ballet, and I had never seen ballet. And this girl happened to have been a very good ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I was just in love. I had to learn how to dance. You really, really remember at 11 being moved by seeing someone Unbelievably dance. moved. Yes. I guess the way, you know, almost a, to a religious yeah. sense, the way yeah. other people see things and, and they're different. I, been, had that. there been dancers in your family? No, uh-uh, there was I mean professional. No, uh-uh, no, nobody professional. Your mother didn't troop you out to dance classes? Oh, they, they didn't want me to dance at really? first. Oh, no, they, you know, the, the ways of the theater, you know, <laughs> you know and all that. Oh, is that all true, by the no, way? No, uh-uh. Oh, <laughs> it's as true as the ways of an office building or any other, uh, or the ways of sports. I mean, we hear this, that, and the other about every profession that we can name. Uh, you know, there, there's some truth to it, and then there's not. You, you have your good dancers and your bad dancers. <laughs> well, no, it's just it, as colloquial as everything. No, else. but I'm thinking more of the. Uh, if we can depart for a feminist, sexist view of uh, all that jazz, it seemed to be that uh, women were really being used by uh, uh, Joe Gideon, who many mm -hmm. people say is Bob Fosse, who you know, admit is. Well, perhaps the they players. were, but then there are a lot of women who use men. You know, You're I, kidding. I just hey, I'm you know, I, well, I hate to say it. You have your good women and your bad women. <laughs> you have your good men and your bad men, and you have a lot in between. <laughs> you have never felt used uh, in show business? Not to where I wasn't getting paid. I mean, it was a fair deal as far as I'm concerned. I, I auditioned, and I was hoping that they'd hire me. You know, I went there. Uh, I never felt used. Um, they gave me wonderful steps to, to do and nice words to say and lovely songs to sing. And then they paid me at the end of the week and then people applauded me. I just really don't see. And now you're interviewing me. So far, it's been quite good. Now, I have had some bad experiences. Mm -hmm. But these things happen. They, you know, you, when you take the bus every day to go to work, you're going to have a lousy bus driver every once in a while that's mean and rotten. And how old are you? 42. So, uh, I was really... <laughs> you didn't even blink. <laughs> well, I, you're not? 42? No. <laughs> I was just thinking, what's your secret? But I wasn't going to pursue it. No. No, I'm in my late 20s. <laughs> late 20s. You're getting that old, though, that you're yeah. afraid to pin it down. <laughs> I used to be real brave. Well, I was thinking 23. Of, <laughs> no, I was thinking of dancers reading again in the studio literature about Gwen Verdon, who took a job from Bob Fosse to rehearse dancers. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I was thinking, gee, her career of dancing is over. Not really, but you know, dancing's hard, and you get beyond a certain age, you really don't want to do it every day. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm, as I say, I'm in my late twenties. That's comparatively young. Uh, and there are days when I don't want to do it every day. It yeah. is hard. It's hard work. Um, she's, she's nowhere. I mean, she dances better than I do. And mm -hmm. Cheetah, Cheetah Rivera, is, and Margot Fontaine, they're all you know, uh, quite a bit older, and uh, they look great, they're beautiful, and they, they, they dance just as strong as they ever do. The reason why uh, Gwen is working with the dancers and dancing is, one, she is very familiar with Bob's work. She's very loyal to Bob. Uh, she's a good person, and part of your duty is to pass on your craft. You know, I right. mean, that's a tradition. And she's, she's a great gal, and she's just doing a, a very nice thing. We're well, lucky to have her. But I'm looking down the road for you. What, what do you see in the future for you? Dancing until how old? Oh, well, I guess, you know, you can dance until you're well over 50, but, you know, you, a lot of people stop around 40, um, you know, because it's basically a young thing. Mm -hmm. and it's like, like a sportsman around mm -hmm. 35, 40, you know, you start dropping out. But that's why, uh, for me, you know, I've been trying to get more into the acting so that I can simply pay the rent after 40. Okay, well, we're going to show you how Anne Reinking pays the rent, uh, and after that, we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> did we lose paper at one point there? Yeah, I heard the uh -huh. sheen go off. Okay, because I remember where it was. We could cover it. All right, you did not lose it. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. 